Autofocus video needs to be two things, predictable and reliable. For video AF, Panasonic still has a ways to go. Which one has better focus? The Sony. I mean, people keep saying, when are they going to just give up and, and go with phase today? Contrast-based autofocus is still contrast-based autofocus. I don't know why Panasonic insists on contrast to take autofocus, but it is what it is. It's still not reliable or predictable enough to recommend for video. When are they going to just give up and go with phase today? But it is what it is. But it is what it is. Not anymore. Did it track my face? Yeah, perfectly. Is it wobbling in the background? No, no, it looks, it's got you. Finally. We did it! Space hybrid contrast there! What did you think of the autofocus? Do you like the autofocus? Autofocus is really good. Is it good, Terry? I think it's, uh, it's a lot better. Best Lumix camera. Uh, I'm, I'm liking this camera. Come with me because you look so fine that I really want to make you mine. I say you look so fine that I really want to make you mine. Four, five, six, come on and get your kicks. Now you don't need the money when you look like that, do you, honey? Full disclosure, Panasonic sent me and Connor and many other YouTubers out to Tokyo to look at the new S5 II. They've also provided the camera to us as well as a bunch of lenses free of charge. We're not allowed to sell the camera. We're not allowed to give it away to anybody, but they did give me this camera to take home. And I think it's important to mention that. The reason phase detect is so important is because it is the technology that allows camera companies like Sony and Canon to have actually accurate and stable and almost human-like focus. It's been around for a while now with dual pixel autofocus from Canon and the phase detect system from Sony, of course. Right now I'm using the Panasonic S5 Mark II in a very traditional YouTube format. You can see as I've gotten closer to the lens, um, the box is actually just around my entire body and it is focusing on my face. When I put my hand in front of my face, it's still detecting that I'm a human, which is cool. And if I move my hand closer, it actually focuses on just the closest object to the frame. And as soon as I remove it, it goes back to the human subject. It saw my face for a second. This is how I look often. I wear a hat with glasses, uh, struggling there a little bit. It's actually focusing on my hand right now, which is closer to the lens. Um, this is something that I would like to see changed with firmware. Panasonic is known for having really good firmware updates and now it's back on my face, by the way. Rolling and then actually turn your full back to me and you can see it now has adjusted to his head and then go ahead and walk away. And regardless of the face being in the frame, the AI is tracking Connor because it knows this is the subject I want. And you can see even at a far distance it's still recognizing him, although now it's gone. It's gone now, but that's still pretty impressive. So this is on a 24 millimeter. It's now picked up Connor again, coming back and it's got your face and everything. So that's the way to go, human tracking. Hmm. Okay. You're a human. I am human. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> One thing that is amazing about this camera is the auto white balance lock feature, which I have enabled on this camera. In the past on other cameras, you never want to shoot an auto white balance because you could be in a scenario where your skin is yellowy for tungsten light and then all of a sudden it turns blue or magenta because the auto white balance is adjusting itself as you're moving from place to place. With auto white balance lock, once I hit record, it locks that white balance. So if you happen to have one of these, <laughs> it makes it even more accurate using a gray card. And now I have perfect white balance using auto white balance and I don't have to fear that it's going to get all wonky. So right now I'm testing this camera in vlog mode on the switch pod using open gate. So with open gate recording on this camera, we're able to shoot in 6K 420, not 422, 10 bit in a three by two aspect ratio. The reason that this is so important for content creators is the fact that you can easily crop this image to a vertical video or a horizontal video very easily. It gives you a little bit more flexibility to do that. Hopefully you're not seeing much wobble in the corners. This is a very wide angle lens that I'm using. This is an 18 millimeter lens. As you can see in some of my footage and some of the other people's footage in Japan, 
There's a lot of IBIS wobble going on, especially with the wide angle lenses. And that was actually a software bug. Panasonic has said that they fixed it. We've received two firmware updates since Japan, which is only a month that they've given us two firmware updates. So that's a good sign. If you turn on IBIS and turn on the E stabilization, uh, it will apparently correct up to 20 millimeters, which is what the kit lens is. So. Uh, just be aware of that. You can get a little bit of wobble wobble, but it's nowhere near as bad as what Canon has. Now, when it comes to the internals of this camera, we're looking at a new processor using the new L-squared alliance with Leica. L-squared technology. But this camera essentially has the same type of sensor as the original S5, but we're getting open gate recording and a lot of other options. But that means that we have the same vlog profile. We have the same d like and other picture profile options, and also the same dual native ISO. So in vlog, this camera is native. Bottom is 640 and the top is 4000. I want to take some time to mention this Condor Blue Cage. Lucas is a good friend, so that's the disclaimer there. I did receive this for free, but I love how it feels in the hand. And it gives you obviously all these mounting points on either side and on the top. It allows me to offset my microphone. This is the Deity uh, D4. I can also start stop the recording with the top handle, very nice cage. But honestly, where things get interesting is that the S5 II is not the only camera that Panasonic announced. This is the S5 Mark II. X. The X, the S5 II X. That is the camera that I want. It's the camera that you want if you're a video shooter. ProRes out, ProRes uh, raw out of the HDMI. We get higher resolution, higher bit rates, better video settings altogether, and it's black. So here I am on the C7. So go ahead and compare this image to the Panasonic and let me know your thoughts on color science because obviously Canon and Panasonic are different uh, manufacturers. They have different sensors altogether. Um, so what do you think? You wanna get some ramen? Ah, that hit the spot. Am I right, Connor? I actually really like this camera. As a YouTuber, I need a flip screen. As a YouTuber, I also need a camera that can take pictures, unlike my C70 that we've been using for all our videos now. It's always been mind-blowing to me because Panasonic has always been really accurate with their autofocus. The DFD system would track my face almost perfectly every time. It clearly is recognizing my face, but I'm not 100% confident that it's actually in focus. So Panasonic has done really great R&D over the years getting the tracking to work, but now with the phase detect, it's actually in focus all the time and it works. For $2,000, you cannot complain. The autofocus works well, the color science is great, the IBIS is great. It gives me everything that I want in a daily carry camera, but maybe not enough for a flagship. Hey Armando. What's up, babe? Ice cream? Ice cream, let's go, dude. Hey! <laughs> so Armando, are you gonna switch? Yeah to Japan. Subscribe. Well,